Hey everybody, it's Ty right here with Before I Forget, along with my friend Kevin. Say hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey, hey. And here we are at the start of season three of our fucking awesome show. Right. Right. And for those listening or watching, you may notice something uh, new about this season. Uh, if you're watching, then you are seeing it. Word. Right. Because we decided to show you our pretty faces. Yes. For whatever reason. Mm. This honestly, like, as we're talking about, I know I've been I've been talking about doing video for like since season one, but as I'm thinking about it now, like this could backfire. <laughs> Why do you think it could backfire? Because now people get to see us, and they're going to see our faces. And sometimes, if we're, you Making know, ugly faces like me right now, trying to figure out different <laughs> things. Is, yeah. When you're doing a show, there's a million things that I'm actually doing on the other side that y'all don't know about, but now you can see it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what's really interesting is, so is, is the plan, is the plan, so the video, oh, I don't even know what we're doing. What do we mean? had a plan, we had a plan with the video, didn't we? Like YouTube. Yes. We're, we're, we were going to do uh YouTube for the show. Uh, this kind of could be the first season that we actually have a full YouTube. Yeah. Kind of setup. Yeah, so I did get like half of season one on on YouTube. It's such a pain in the ass to upload things, and it takes so fucking long. Um, especially with the length of some of those shows, man. Because season one, we were out of control, like three hours <laughs> for no reason. It was we... no reason. It was for reasons. Wasn't... We had to keep repeating ourselves over and over again in some cases. Yeah, yeah, and then. I mean, people had a lot of things to say. So. Yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of shit. Yeah, I mean, so here we here we are in the new season, man. And uh, the the last season was great. Um, I had no clue that we were even at the point that we should have ended the season until you looked into it and you're like, wait a minute, we're we're at that. Yeah. That point. Um. Yeah. No, man. Like. Because like we kind of lost track of it, um, when I guess when I when I left, or whatever, like we both kind of lost track of keeping keeping tabs on where we were with the show, and then oh, yeah. you were putting out episodes and and putting out episodes, and I wasn't doing a fucking thing, and then um, I can you know we put out a few more episodes when I came back, and I got to looking at it, I was like, wait a second, yeah, wait a I, minute. We had just recorded our 25th episode, um, and so for those listening and watching, we have to say that now, um, <clears throat> Tyree and I talked about our first season being the only season that has 26 episodes um, in honor of our um, of the 26th Infantry Regiment, the Blue Spaders. So every subsequent season will, season will have 25 um, episodes. So... Yeah, I I got to looking into it and I was like, holy fuck, we just recorded number twenty five. So last week's episode with Miss Nora, um, was our season closer, which I thought was a pretty cool show. Yeah, yeah. that was a great show. Got to learn a lot of cool shit about, uh, you know, like other people's idea of what's going on over there because you know I didn't I didn't know, still don't. Yeah. Know. Well, I mean, we had we had our perspective right of of the of our time there but like we weren't from there it's not our home um so i mean it's it's different here in that other perspective i guess mm -hmm. yeah and then how kind of how, how she's em embraced the american american way of life yeah, yeah pretty neat the arkans arkansas your way of life. <laughs> exactly it's, like it's funny you say arkansas you're not arkansan uh, I've known you for fucking decades now. I know how to say fucking folk of Arkansas as a collective. Yeah, well, no, the proper way though is Arkansan, but I prefer Arkansas. -er. Sounds it, was, better. it does. It was a and that was a big debate back in the day. It was um, what should people from Arkansas be called? Were they wearing like fluffy shirts and 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 
suits and and you know uh, wigs with with the powder on. <laughs> Not that far back in the day. What? <clears throat> Arkansas only became like a state. back in like seventy eight, seventy nine. No, this is 18, 1836 when it became a state. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look um. At Look at you guys go. Yeah, and that's a little bit of history for everybody. But yeah, so it's crazy to think, right? Because our first episode that we recorded in season two um, was with uh, Graybeard Tactical, Matt Little. Yes. And that seems like forever ago. It does. Like um, recording with him, re- recording with uh, R.G. Jamsler. Um, like that seems like a long damn time ago. You got to think this is the same season that we, we recorded with the Rebe. Mm-hmm. And that seems like forever ago. Which um, I happen to have the book that he talks about, Black Arts by this guy. It's backwards, Jim Frederick. But um, I know it looks right to me. Oh, okay, it looks backwards to me. So this but is correct. It's a uh, read the book, listen to the episode. You'll know the whole story. But anyway, yeah. So what do you think, man? Season three, pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, we already got some pretty good you know guests lined up um i think as long as we keep putting work in everything should get better uh from season one to season three or season one to season two is a a massive leap between you know the quality of show Mm -hmm. and now we just have to you know tighten up the shot group as they say clean shit up a little bit and everything will be fine Or, or better anyway yeah i think uh yeah season one was rough Right, audio was garbage. Mm-hmm. Video was not even on the table. Yeah, um, I don't even think you owned a webcam at that point. <clears throat> no. Um, so, that like in my business, <laughs> I mean, there's no reason to have a webcam unless you're like a cam model. And God, uh, man, you you I you are have, not. I don't have the face for it. <clears throat> you don't have the anything for it. The wrong no. gender. <laughs> it's all. Um, yeah um yeah to, to to season two with better mics and you've got that roadcaster and it's so fucking important and vital i think like i said if the fucking roadcaster was to break down i would spontaneously combust because i would not know what to do yeah i'm really surprised that you like actually packed that thing up and flew it to destin with you i was so afraid and uh, it has a little scratches and bumps on it, but it's good to go. I, I would not do it again. Yeah. So that was a one-off, unless they make like a Rodecaster Pro Travel Mini. Ooh, you need to get one of those, um, like a Pelican hard case. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For they, for travel purposes. They make a hard case for this. I'm just too fucking poor to get my coins together and get one, but... I mean, at at some point, if we're a serious group of folks trying to do a serious bit of work for our fellow veterans, I need to fucking invest. So, stop bitching and do it, right? Yeah. Well, and that kind of um, takes us into other thing we talked about. So, next year, right? We're still in twenty two. Yeah. So next year, next June, right? We're talking about Colorado still, mm-hmm. right? For our next reunion, which folks. <clears throat> Not like if we, I don't want. Well, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to say this and sound like we're taking all the credit. But like doing this podcast has been amazing for the two of us and like our group of dudes and the extended family that we have acquired along the way. Because I mean, we did last year. We did Nashville for New Year's, and then six months later, we were in Destin, Florida for a larger reunion and then we're doing Nashville again in like two and a half weeks. And then and I think there's gonna be a larger group at that one. And then Colorado again, I th- it's still in June. So like another six months, like every six months that I know of, there's a gathering of some type happening and the previous 17 years that hadn't been a thing at all. So, damn thing. um, <laughs> I mean, maybe minor things here and there, right? But like, um, not really anything official or anything uh, blown up, or whatever. But so this is, 
it's 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 really neat to see the direction that it's going and uh so we had talked about um a while back or not a while back a couple of days ago like whatever the fuck that was um i bought a gopro on yeah. on a whim you know what i'm saying i saw it was a decent price i haggled um and i got it for a more decenter price cuz that's correct mhm and uh and so i we kind of had this idea that like maybe at some point we could kind of take the show on the road and make a i don't know i mean we'll have to hash out the details on that but i kind of like the idea of like kind of like what we talked about like going to different places and meeting up with different people and doing stuff oh yeah i think it's a great idea we we have so many people who were touched or whatever by the show or you know just our good friends who we wanted to drive and go see mm. uh, why can't we record that and let people see that shit that'd be yeah. cool by me man i mean I, I think it's a great idea you always come up with great ideas mm, maybe not always this is this oh wait pretty much 79 percent of the time <laughs> this is very specific yeah 79 percent. i am point three yeah always three Always a good, always a good idea. Sometimes, always. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time, sometimes. Yeah. The rest of the time, nah. there are times that occur. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. Uh. So I'm actually kind of really excited about that. Like, obviously, that's not going to happen, you know, in the next, like, six months, right? But... I mean, it, it, well, fuck, it could, you know, but uh, I definitely would like to turn that into something um, to where we can actually get out and go do things. Um, we want to introduce a website. So it's like a one stop shop for people to go check out the podcast. And we want to start like kind of like doing bios on people that we uh, have on as guests um, and just like, you know, what's what's uh, what's new with the show news. Um, we had talked about doing, um, so t- Tyree and I, at one point in time, we used to write a lot it's and, so um, writing. yeah. And we thought about adding a section on there to, you know, if we didn't necessarily want to like come on and do a recording or, um, whatever. And we just wanted to like jot some thoughts down and like, you know, whatever, then we can have our own little, like kind of like a blog kind of thing going. Um, so and I, and I can be on varying things, right? Like I'm I'm constantly bitching about something. So, uh, and honestly, I think that's what it would end up being for me is more of a a rant piece than anything else. Uh, I feel like I rant a lot. I was ranting earlier today. Not really. I mean, it's a good place to uh, that we can expand on our thoughts on the show or or whatever whatever fucking things that we have going on. Yeah, I am so political. You guys have no clue. You could learn <laughs> about that. If you, you know, I guess look at our website and blog stuff, mm. might make you not want to fucking follow us anymore, but hey, yeah, this is, it is what it is. Well, I, I feel like that's kind of one benefit to the show, right? Is like, <clears throat> we, we obviously draw in a, a military crowd mm. and those who support the military. Yeah. Um, and as we all know that the military is made up of all different types of opinions and beliefs and you know, there are plenty of things that you and I have um, opposing ideas on um, and plenty of things that we have the same idea on. Mm-hmm. So I think, and, and and for those that don't know, like, I know, I know we've mentioned it in previous episodes, previous shows, but like we try to stay apolitical on this, right? We don't want to like alienate people. We don't want to um, come off as too divisive. So we kind of just stick to the stories that people have to tell or the stories that we have to tell um, without getting too deep, um, deep, deep in the weeds about with, with all the other stuff. Right. But like, so the blog thing um, could be just a way to, for us to express those portions if we need, if we felt the need to or whatever, because Lord knows there's plenty of shit going on in politics that, that, that either one of us could like go on and on and on about. Mm-hmm. Um. So that that's cool um, that we could start doing that. We kind of wanted to also add in um, a storefront. Uh, I kind of say that with a bit of hesitancy because who buys things from a podcast? But like, 
fucking why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, why not, baby? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I like to support things. Yeah. You know? And it's not like we're going to do enormous, huge runs on stuff. It's going to be like limited for basically if you're really into the show, uh, fucking buy a shirt. Let other people know about it. It'd be great. And, uh, you know, we'd appreciate it because all that's going to go into making the show better. It's yeah. not going to go fucking go to Hollywood, Vegas to spend money. Teach right. Money. No, yeah. we're not. We're not like that. We're we the, the fucking money goes back to the show. Yeah. Um <clears throat> like as some people have noticed that we have now um different ads and they generate money and so all of that money actually any money that we've made on the show, which is very, very minimal, if you actually break it down for per hourly rate, like we're at like two cents an hour. You know what I mean? Per day. Per day, yeah. Um, for a minute it was like that. Yeah, but uh, it's it still sits where it is. Like it's it hasn't been and really touched at all. Um, but the goal is to generate some, put it back in the show, and then kind of like grow the show from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the big goal with it. Uh, on that side, plus like, like I said, I like to support things. Like y'all see the sticker that I have here from Zero Foxtrot, and um, I really like their shit. Like. Every time I buy something from them, there's the option to like sign up to be a brand ambassador for them. And I'm like, fucking, I would absolutely do that because I own so much of their shit. But they never hit me up. They never, I never get their email that says, hey, man, be our ambassador. Ambassador. Yeah. You know, you see in my background, it's completely blurred out because there's, I don't support anything. But if you pay me the money, boy, (laughs) let me tell you. I will support the shit out of whatever. Not not whatever, because that makes me seem like a dickhead. Mm. Uh, mm. It's got to be a, the shit that I dig. Um, and if you know me, you know it's very little that I dig. So if if I want to try to advertise it here, Vaseline, it's it's for the reason. driest of skin. Yeah, let me uh, marijuana for the never mind. Yeah. Uh, Whatever, I can sell shit. I can sell water to a well, baby. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all about how you, you know, are you passionate about what it is? And I think that's what you're getting at is like, um, you know, I, 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 I dig their stuff. I dig our show. So like, and I feel like people dig our show. And fuck, wouldn't that be cool if like people represented it? Um, Hell yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like. I want to do stickers with our logo. I don't know if people would buy that shit and put it places, but um, how cool would that be to like be out and about? You can't the blur effect, man. You can't see a damn thing. It's all yeah. weird. It's like it's, it's all, like it's, it's a penis. I just showed everyone. Oh, look <laughs> yeah. at this. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep it PG here, man. It is. PG but like, it, it, imagine, yeah, imagine how cool it would be to like be out in the world and like, huh? That's uh, that's my show right there. Kind of like your sister at the fucking VA hospital, hearing your voice. Right, isn't you that know? crazy? Like, there's there 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 are people who recognize the show. Not like they're not fans of it. There's there are a couple. Of, well, you know, no. To be honest, I look at the numbers. There are fans of the show. There's a group of folks who, no matter what, listen to our entire silly bullshit that we go on and on about. And they wait until next week to hear the next silly bullshit that we go on and on about. It's it's weird, but it's cool because like we started off with the idea of just talking to each other about shit. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking to these people about shit, getting shit off our chests, all kind of yeah. stuff. It's great, and you know people like to hear it. So hopefully, yeah, what people did that... like to look at it too? Yeah. Mm. We'll see, but like, what did that? What did that say on the Spotify fucking year wrap up thing that sixty seven people were in their were their top were their number one podcast? Yeah, sixty seven people. Yeah, and you might right. and, and people might you know you might think well sixty seven people on a planet of eight billion, but like literally nothing. Right? Yeah, I mean that's a drop in the bucket, but like that's sixty seven people that like listen to our show. Mm-hmm. Like as the number one podcast that they listen to, yeah. And I can only assume that those sixty-seven people also listen to like Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Jocko, and they're like, you know what? 
let me pause the show because before I forget, just came out with a new episode, and I want to listen to that first. Right. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, to America. Yeah, and the eleven countries that we are heard in. You're eleven. Gracias. Or however that goes. Yeah. Is it no? Gracias? Thank yeah. you. Depends on which country you're addressing, I think. Uh, for shizzle. All, all of y'all, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for showing up. Because it's, it's not easy to show up sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's not easy to show up. But hopefully, you know, hearing my voice or Kevin's voice or uh, our voice as a collective. <laughs> as a our whole, collective voice. Yeah. Uh, collectively on your whole makes this uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Collectively on your whole. Makes it cool, man. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And nah. you know what? I'm hearing more and more about other people doing their own thing too. And that's even better. Like What you, you mean, Willis? What you mean? No, there's other people who want to do their own shows. They want to do their own thing. They want to talk to their buddies and record it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Do it. Yeah, more power to you, man. Um I mean, absolutely. Like if it helps you, then why not do it? If it brings your people together again, why not do it? You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. And it really is pretty simple to start up a podcast. Like, you just need something to talk about and some good shit. Yeah. Um, you know, like mics or something that helps, right? And then stay consistent with it, just like with anything. Like, all the extra shit here is, like, completely unnecessary. We can totally do this from our phones. It's all about the heart that you put into it, really. That's the whole thing behind everything. Fuck the microphones and the camera and everything else. If if it's if the two people working on this shit, like me and Kevin, when, when we started this shit, if if it was like, I don't know, somebody who I wasn't happy working with or somebody who I didn't have these kind of stories with, this mm. shit would have fucking crashed. So yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a partnership. I think it's possible to do it on your own too. Yeah. No, and and uh I don't know if you saw, like, I I did one of those anonymous question things on my Instagram, and um, somebody had commented about how I should do the show by myself. They don't like you, apparently. Hey, man. Hey, you're not you're not everybody's cup of tea, right? You 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 might be a little too Tyree for them. That's the beauty of it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that and that was kind of my response to it. It was like, first of all, that doesn't make any fucking sense because, um. I, I tried to be as polite as possible and and how I worded it, but like in my head, I'm like, you can get fucked. Uh, and and the reason I say that is because like, um, I know I can be very wordy. I know I can talk a lot, and you <laughs> reel that in. And then like, sometimes when you're talking about something, I know what you're talking about, and you're not able to like find the words. Mm-hmm. So I can, you know, what I'm saying like we have we have like this like this this contrast that works together. I think, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. I don't it's think it, it wouldn't yeah. work great with other folks. Yeah, it's like yin and yang, uh, black and white. Yeah. That's why I picked you. I selected you for this. First of all, we've been talking about all this shit for like 15 years, but did you not get my... No, my I got the black and white yin. Okay. But, I mean, I, I <laughs> didn't want to make it like, oh, man, he's got a joke. I worked really hard on that for like three seconds in my mind. Right. Just now. Say, so, hey, I I just want to say like that's kind of like a dad joke. I somebody called me obnoxious yesterday, and I was like, well, I put the the G in obnoxious because, like the Chinese president, nobody likes me. And I didn't yeah. get like, I that should have been like a standing ovation because who would have thought of that? You did. I did. You did. You thought of it totally. Pat me on. The motherfucking back. And no one else thought about it at all. And no one else is going to think about it. True. Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of controversial things. <laughs> <laughs> Segway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, so Tyree, well, so first of all, like, we decided that like our season openers would definitely be just you know he and I we could recap the previous season talk about what we have what we have coming up and I feel like we've done that pretty decently and then we were just going to talk about whatever happened to come up but as a lot of people know 
um, last week, because the show will air on Monday, uh, last week, um, something pretty significant happened in the world. The world, yeah. I'll say the world, yeah, because of the the of who the the one person is. And uh, I was like, well, we got to talk about it, man. We do. Yes. Right. We try, like I said, like I said earlier, we try to say apolitical. We, we try and, and and stay away from that. But this, I think, goes beyond politics. It goes it goes way beyond politics. It's it, it's more into the realm of like what's truly right and wrong, and and how does it affect um, humans in general, right? The world population, which is now breached eight billion people with a B. It's insane. Um, but that's a whole other topic for me. But um, yeah. Uh, Grinner, Brittany Grinner, Griner, Grinner. How do you say it? Griner. Yeah, Griner sounds right in my head. But you know, what are your thoughts on that, man? Brittany B. Brittany, <laughs> Brittany G. G. Brittany G. Yeah. Brittany G. B G. Yeah. B G. Yeah. Um. So. So. There were. Uh, th- these are my thoughts. Okay, uh, I'm a country. I am my own nation. Oh, okay. And uh, I have these laws and, and this border in order to get into this great country of mine that you want to get into. You, we have to pass this border. Mm-hmm. There's some things you can't have. Like in other places, you can have that shit all day, you know, but over here on this side, no. So, right. you know, those signs are up. Don't come up, don't come up here with that. Or you're gonna, you know, there's consequences now. Consequences you may not agree with, but and I'm crazy. I'm a crazy person. So the consequences that I come up with are gonna be crazy. Like I could send you to jail for 10 years for vape pens. Mm-hmm. I'm crazy. This is my this is my country. Yeah, it's my country. I can do what I want. Yeah. So <clears throat> before you come in. Make sure you're good. If you're good, we won't have any issues. Yeah. So BG may not have known that or not, but she was f- caught with vape cartridges, little pins. Like I have fucking marijuana here because here in America it's legal. In California, it's okay. In in Russia, currently, it's not. So. Who am I to be mad at that country for imposing their rules? That person should have been more careful before they came in there. But on the flip side, 10 years for vape pens? Like, I get it. Like, I know that we're in the middle of some beef with them, and they're going to try to hammer this girl, uh, try to make an example out of her. Um, But... In order to get her back home, there was a switch trade off. I think we lost that trade real bad because, you know, Kevin, who who was the trade for? What was his name? Victor? Victor Bout, Boat, Boot, some, the, his nickname, the Merchant of Death. Right. That's his name. The, the world's, arguably the world's most wanted arms dealer responsible for likely millions of deaths um, all over the world, <clears throat> which is wild. Yeah. So, you know, and you mentioned, you know, we have, we have beef with Russia and we have had for years, obviously like the, you know, just, it's just been a long going, long standing thing, but more recently the, the nonsense uh, with Russia invading Ukraine and Ukraine whooping that ass and then all the the nonsense going in there and then you know in 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 the beginning of all of that she's over there flying in cuz she's going to go play basketball there and bam popped to the airport or wherever the fuck she was with these with these cartridges so the timing seemed seemed off for a lot of people a, a lot of people were like man that's what's going on it's a political move right this is something that russia is holding above us so that you know they they have some some bargaining chip 
But if you go six, eight months into the past before the Russia-Ukraine thing, you have a very similar case that happened. And I'm not even talking about the Marine guy because that happened years before that. A very similar case to Brittany Griner's, Griner's BG. Mm-hmm. Okay. A guy named Mark Fogel. You heard about him? No. Uh, I, I think maybe, but it's been a minute. What's the word? So he is a 60-year-old um, international history teacher, right? He has his international bachelorette in, or bachelor degree or whatever the fuck it is in teaching. Like, so he's, he's able to teach in all these countries, and he's taught in several countries. And for the previous 10 years, he had been teaching in Russia. And he flew into Russia with medicinal marijuana, medicinal cannabis, and was busted for less than half an ounce. Do you know what his sentence was? 10 years? Or labor? 14. 14. 14 years? 14 years in prison in Russia. They don't... All right, so... <clears throat> they don't fuck around, period. No. For no reasons. So no. the fact that BG was out there balling and, and hooping it up, she got caught with his sticky, and then... that She, she had, got... She got, she got a fairly yeah. license. Yeah. Yeah. Comparatively. But, but, you know, I guess it's really not as political as people think. People didn't probably didn't realize that. I'm not saying that it's, it's, uh, like I said, it's not fucked up because, you know, it's fucked up, but those yeah. are their laws. <laughs> that's their, that's their shit. I'm, I'm sorry. And again, the trade off was fucking terrible. I think we could have got two or two or three for one for that one instead of, uh, we so kind of got hosed here. No, it goes even worse. Okay. So Paul Wellen, right? And that's the name that like ever since this, this trade went down or mm. started to, the negotiation started to happen. This is the, one of the names of the, the name that's been popping up because nobody's heard of Mark Vogel. Anybody that I've asked is like, who the fuck is that guy? But I'm like, who's Paul Wellen? And they're like, oh, that's the Marine. Yeah. So <clears throat> for a couple years ago, four or five years ago, he was busted over there. Now, this is a former United States Army, or United States Army, United States Marine who holds uh, citizenship. He was born in Canada, lived in the U.S., has citizenship in the U.K., England maybe, and then Ireland as well. So he has multiple citizenships. Was in Russia, and he got, he got uh, arrested on, um, for allegedly being a spy. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brought up on, on spy charges, right? Because that makes sense. He wasn't even in Intel when he was in the Marine Corps. So that's that's a whole other thing. But do you know how many years he got? Forever. No, like, uh, I was going to say like 10 or 15 again. But how many years? 16. I mean, 16 years for being a spy. It's other people you get at other places you get executed. Like, hey, he got, all, he got over. <clears throat> 16 years for being a spy. 14 years for the teacher, the international history teacher, is 60 years old for the, bringing in less than half an ounce. A little bit of the sticky. So <clears throat> it's just, it's really odd. So when you, when you, when you look at this trade, um, uh, what was the, what was the Russian guy's name? Um, Victor. Vic, Bo- yeah. Victor, Victor boat about, I don't know. B O U T. Yeah. Sounds like a villain from a fucking Bond movie, Victor. Some other shit. So going back to July, the current administration started talking about like a trade deal, right? And the trade deal included Brittany Grenner and Paul Whelan, right? Those yeah. two for somebody that somebody had not been identified yet. Mark Fogel the history teacher who was there on the same charges in prison on the same char- for the same charges for five years more than Brittany was not even mentioned in that trade deal. So when the trade finally happens, Paul Wellen, the Marine is left out of the trade deal and we get Brittany Renner back and Russia gets the world's most wanted, most notorious arms dealer. I mean, is he really the worst though? Is it is he like is he like the number one dude or is he like top ten? 
my understanding, he was like the number one guy. <clears throat> I I had heard, and I didn't. I this is just what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not. But like the movie uh, War of Lord, uh, Lord of War, yeah, with Nicolas Cage is supposedly based on him. Brittany Griner ain't even the top ten of nothing, and we. I'm I'm saying, man. I'm not I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. We got hoes in that deal. Um, and it's clearly a like a political thing on their side or you know, our side, because she's a black female and be all that. Um, you know, it, it looks good for voting, I guess. I don't even want to get all super, super political, but to me that's what that was about because mm -hmm. they could have thrown in homeboy or at least put a little bit more work to to get it, at least one or two people. Or you know what? We'll come back to the draw on the, to the table later and try to figure this out because we gotta we gotta be really fair here because we're not gonna get a lot of shots at this with this country while they're doing this wild shit right now. We'll we'll come back and talk if you don't want to give us what we really need instead of what looks nice. Yeah. Well, I think. I don't know. One thing that's kind of upsetting to me, aside from the whole trade deal, because that is mega fucked up, and that's why I say it's a world problem. Mm -hmm. But when you also talk about all of the other Americans that are imprisoned in other countries all over the world for whatever charges, do they not count? Because there are some, right? They're all over. I mean, and then, lot, but those people like. It depends on their charges. I mean, like you said, when you, when you, when you first start talking about it, like you go to somebody else's country, they have a, a standard set of laws. If I have medical marijuana prescribed to me and I fly to, say, Germany, mm -hmm. where it's probably not legal. Right. Uh, I, should, I should expect, when we were stationed over there, if we, if we broke German laws, we should expect to get picked up by the polizei mm -hmm. and handled. Yeah. Right? It is what it is. <clears throat> so... I mean, and that's the thing is like hers was medicinal. Mm -hmm. So was Mark Fogel's. It's the, it's literally the same exact case. But what's more fucked up about it is we have this 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 woman who plays in the WNBA and she gets busted in another country for bringing cannabis or cartridges mm -hmm. and the president, you know, gets down and 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 makes his haggles his deal to free her and bring her back to the U.S. But what about all of the people who are currently locked up in the U.S. for the same fucking charge? Oh, like people who are here in America that are locked up for that, and yeah. they gave away the world's top ten ballinest arms dealer for, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, it's, and, it's and I, crazy, and, right? Isn't that? And I, it is. And I know there was a thing a while back where like federally they tried to like make it to where like was it they um what's the word where they just do like away with charges? Expunged, expunged the much of be like uh your 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 past non criminal or non violent um drug offenses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but if I'm not mistaken, there was a thing to where like, you know, it was federally passed or whatever, but like the states still had to like do their part. So it was still up to the state whether or not it was going to if they were going to keep those people in lockup. Mm. But like, what is the difference between her and another country breaking their 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 law about cannabis, and then people in our country who broke a law about cannabis? She's like the president gets involved, has her wife in the Oval Office with him, making the deal. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, there's all these people in our country who are locked up for weed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, now I don't, <clears throat> I, I, I don't, um, partake. I can't. Right? I'm in the military, and my civilian job also, um, doesn't allow it. So I mean, and that's fine. But I can still understand that. Like, or I can still recognize. Like how kind of fucked up that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's wild, really it's wild to me. It's terrible. Like uh, they're they're 
you know, not, I mean, now that people are starting to understand, like, it's not a great thing to have all these people locked up for nothing. Um, now it's great. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're starting to figure that out. But imagine like back in the nineties or eighties, when you got locked up, like people are facing long ass terms, like fucking damn near life sentences. They mm-hmm. lost half their life over this stuff. They're yeah. never thinking that much time back. Poor BG got hooked up on the charge. She was supposed to do a 10 year bid and she did like what a couple weeks. Good for her. But these those people, they lost like everything. They're not that's that you don't fucking get time back, man. That's yeah. done. So now they gotta pick up the pieces with you know, now they have this marijuana charge or, or whatever fucking thing they got charged up with. In in a lot of those cases, hey man, they were probably selling big ass fucking bundles of it. Like you got this they got the smack on the wrist. The the charges were way fucking absorbed, way, way more than what Brittany or, or the that teacher is facing. Mm-hmm. In a different country, we treat our people way worse. But you know, Brittany's somebody and it's time for elections. So let's go get all those votes for her. I mean, let's go get her out. <laughs> right. Well, and so, and I, I do want to like point out that like <clears throat> she's an American, right? And I'm I'm glad we were able to 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 bring to bring her back. I am definitely. Word to her, like straight up on the side. I see what you're saying. Good on her for getting out. I guess and, you know, like yeah. I'm sure they put in the work to get the other people, but you know, Russia made us look dumb. But continue. <clears throat> I'm just saying, like, you know, there, what about the other Americans? I just don't understand why that's because that was a shit trade. Every, every, everyone, everyone, everyone knows it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's um, basically what they said, dude. Like, we'll get you next time. The next next time we come around here. Yeah, next next uh, semi celebrity that fucks up in your country. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just wild to me, man. Um, kind of mad about it, but you know, and it's it, it's funny. Like I do, I do see people on social media like defending the president and defending her and saying that she was wrongfully accused. She's not wrongfully accused. Like that's she had marijuana or cannabis product that's not allowed in that country on her person in her luggage. Like that, she's not wrongfully fucking accused. And that's enough. I've heard people say like, well, she was prescribed it. That doesn't mean that she can fly to another country with it. Yeah. Those, those countries laws matter. That works here in America where maybe you can fly from one state to another state, <clears throat> but not to a different country with its own laws and its own military and its own currency and its own everything. Like yeah. they're not the same. You can't, and again, I'm sure it was a mistake. I'm yeah. sure it was a mistake. She didn't go in there on purpose with with fucking drugs. Like, there's a lot of people who travel with guns that had no no clues loaded. It's yeah. just a mistake. That's a fucking dumb mistake. Get your shit together. But yeah. it's it's a mistake, nonetheless. But that's their fucking law. So you know you got to deal with their shit. Right. And you know. You got lucky that who was in office is in office because I think if it was somebody else mm-hmm. who's all chummy with Russia, you probably wouldn't have gave a mm-hmm. shit. You'd be like, well, it is what it is. Kind of like what yeah. I'm saying, but like way asshole here. Right. Well, and you have to keep in mind that when, when, um, uh, well, and Paul Wellen was picked up in Russia. That was under the previous administration, and there he is, still there. So yeah, I was gonna say that's those people who were in jail before Biden got there were in jail before Biden got there. So <laughs> right, it's like hey, he, he, you know, Trump was there before that, and then Obama, Obama was there before that. There's people who were imprisoned all over the world, mm-hmm. and we know about it. And that's not even on some conspiracy type shit. Like you can look it up. Uh, and I'm sure we gave it a shot, but some countries are fucking hard liners, man. You ain't, you know, it's not gonna work. Yeah, like Dennis Robin tried to go and try to. <laughs> to yeah. Who wants Dennis Robin's help? Like, come on, man. I want. Hey, 
real. If I, was, man, if I was locked up in a different country and Dennis Rodman came to my fucking rescue, that mm. would be all fuck. The, the worm, the worm shows up We're on your fucking, behalf. Dude. Dennis Rodman shows up with his fucking dyed up hair and shit and all kind of fucking artillery shells pierced to his face. And he's supposed to help me? Yeah, I don't know. I mean that, and but that that is kind of testament to like when when people are saying like, "Oh, this administration fucked it up." The the previous administration would have done better. Mm, it, yeah, there's somebody locked up in that country from that time frame, and they're they're still locked up in that country. So it's hard. It's it, you, it's hard to it's hard, it's a hard sell for me, right? It's a hard sell for me. Mm-hmm. Um. But anyway, the whole the whole thing is fucked up. But like talking about like other other countries and their rules and their laws and everything else, like that that that's even being on display during for the, during the World Cup in in Qatar right now. Yeah, I don't know if you've been following any of that at all. But like there's been <clears throat> there's been people, um, Americans, um, people from the UK showing up to these stadiums to go watch their uh, teams play, mm-hmm. and they're showing up in things um, that the Qatari government just doesn't allow like the journalist the world cup journalist i can't remember his name um showing up in a rainbow t-shirt um in support of the lgbt community Mm -hmm. and while that's great in america um in various other places actually means great all over the world but like in their country that's not something that they're down with but people were all mad at qatar but like oh they you know that's bullshit blah 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 like that's their country that's their culture that's their way of life so it's yes we can agree collectively that that's fucked up yeah but like that's still their country yeah and And i say oh man to totally clean like uh nobody's saying like to believe in anything like that like if you like to wear that kind of stuff or if you believe in that kind of thing that's cool that's on you but but like if you listen to what he's saying here like it's not a strike against you it's their rules like that's what they don't dig you can't go over there doing it think you're on some fucking crusader type shit they'll fucking string you up and it ain't nothing nobody can do about it and it's funny you say it's nothing nobody <laughs> can do about it the double negative all the way around but it's funny you say the word crusader because there were even some guys from england mm-hmm. who showed up to a match <clears throat> Uh, to see the English play mm-hmm. dressed up as crusaders. They were denied entry. Yeah. No fucking shit. What? I mean, like, what was the crusades about, right? It was it was Christianity versus Islam. Mm-hmm. We were traveling to these countries and slaughtering people by the fucking hundreds of thousands in the name of things, right? Yeah. And and they're gonna show up to a match in in a, in a, in a in a Muslim country dressed up as a crusader. Well, that's because people have too much time on their hands. It's crazy to me. Like uh, somebody was like, "Hey, this is a good idea." Yeah. <laughs> somebody else is like, "You know what? Fuck yeah, let's do it." So let's spend a bunch of money to fly all the way over there and get denied, and then raise a big funk about it. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole thing, man. Yeah, like the World Cup. I mean, one, like the, the tickets the tickets to a game got to be astronomical. And now you're going to fly to Qatar, stay there for however long. Whew. But um, and I found this out the other day, but I, I just want to mention that now, like uh, that journalist, his name is Grant Wall. Um, He just recently passed away in Qatar. Under what circumstances? Because I was trying to figure that out. Uh, I, they They seem like they're trying to duck out all the answers that I need. Right. <clears throat> they said he just collapsed. His brother says he suspects foul play. But hey, you know what happens. Hmm. You know what happens, man. They what come happened? for you. Okay, you know the so there was the all right, Russia. We're back on Russia. Okay. They they got the guy with the uh the the, the umbrella poke and it, it put the radiated fucking poison into his body and then he died a couple weeks later. You know oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, but I, I it sounds familiar. That's how I got him. <clears throat> what movie did you watch? No, that's not a movie. That's real life. <laughs> I know it was in a movie though too. No, but that's what uh, 
that's what the, that's how they had that's how he says he got poked he said he oh was, yeah yeah it was yeah. like some kind of ricin poison or something weird like that uh-huh. or you know not ricin but uh nuclear shit i don't know what the fuck something poisonous was mm-hmm. injected into his body via a blow dart gun from a umbrella or a scratch or some shit and he said as soon as it happened he knew exactly what it was because you know he's a part of that community the right spy community or whatever right they got ids and everything and he got it's, hit with it and grand he, chicks. yeah he knew them he knows everything and as soon as they hit him with it he was like oh they got me like shit that they hit me with the umbrella <laughs> that got me with the umbrella they got me. Indoors of all places. You know you don't open umbrellas indoors. Yeah, that's how he knew <clears throat> it was all bad. Yeah, and so, <clears throat> you know. They opened the umbrella indoors and it's like, oh, fuck. Fuck. Well, and so there's, there's, there's a lot of. Um, that's terrible. There's a lot of people that have come on videos and shows and radio shows and YouTube videos and whatever the fuck else talking about like the secrets or the declassified information of like certain cia operations in various countries all over the world like the different means of like um you know causing havoc in another country or assassinating somebody that we didn't want around anymore or whatever and these are these are things that were absolutely created um with that end in mind so it's it's honestly not too far-fetched to believe but i also you have to ask the question like what reason would the Qatari government have to assassinate this guy? He's a journalist, right, who wore a rainbow shirt to a game and got denied entry and made a big public news and and everybody knew, everybody knew that that Qatar just doesn't, they don't, that's not stuff that they're interested in, so like Wait, so this journalist was the guy with the rainbow shirt? Same guy, yeah. Oh man, so okay, oh it makes it look even more mad Man, it's sketchy. Like, hey, man. But, 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 why? What purpose would Qatar have to to off this guy? Do you know how much Qatar paid for that World Cup? A lot of dinar. Two hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Do you know how much we paid for? Not we, but how much was spent on the last few Olympics? A lot of dinar. Much less than two hundred billion. <laughs> This whole thing, this event that's going on is going to be go down as one of the most expensive events in the history of mankind for now, yeah. up until the next time. They don't want you down there fucking shit up. Like, stop being dumb. We spent so much money on this fountain. Get your shit together. It's Wear something. the right clothes. We don't even sell alcohol at these games because you don't, we don't want you to fuck up nothing. Like, I saw yeah. pictures of the people from Japan win or lose and they're cleaning up shit. They know what's up after the games. Have you seen that? Uh-uh. No, they clean up the stadium after the game. The Japanese fans? Yes. Because they fucking respect other countries' shit. They're not yeah. there to cause problems. They're not there to raise awareness to their fucking cause. They're just there to watch some soccer. I'm sorry, football. And get the fuck out of there. That's all they want to do. Enjoy the country. Yeah. Not fuck shit up and leave. Yeah. It's really nice of the Japanese folk, man. Right. Good job to them. Come on over to my place. Yeah. No shit. Um, Shout out to the entire country of Japan. Yeah. The the Empire of Japan. Are they Empire still? I don't know. They're cool dudes now. Yeah. Good job, Japan. Crazy. But no, it it is it is a whole thing though. But I still like. I mean, and 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 the World Cup has kind of been a big PR clusterfuck for Qatar anyway, just because you know the human rights violations, uh, accusations, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's to, terrible. To, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. Terrible. just to prepare for. It. And now, have you, have you heard about that like mega city called the Wall or some shit that they're trying to build? Up? I don't know if it's in Qatar. Or where it is exactly, but it's some like sixty something kilometer wall that will house people and businesses and oh, yeah, okay. everything. Yeah. You never have to leave it. You can live there your entire life and 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 never 
really see the whole thing, I guess. I mean, I guess you could see the whole thing, but like everything in your <clears throat> section of the wall will have everything that your section of the wall needs. And that's supposed to be some like astronomical dollar amount to build. And apparently like they're breaking ground on it right now or yeah. some shit. Because what? Uh, people will buy whatever you sell them. <clears throat> no, that's true. But I mean, why, when you why the fuck would you want to stay in your little section of the wall for the rest of your life forever, unless you just really hate people and you just want to be fucking just there by yourself? But you even if go, you hate people, man, Nick, you're stuck in this wall. Yeah. Is this supposed to hold like several hundred thousand people or some shit? I mean, are you? But you're not really stuck, right? You can leave if you want. It's not like you're. It's not like a fucking. No, yeah, like you're not like. The doors are locked at uh, at uh, nine p.m. So yeah. you would literally inside. just be paying to go to jail right there, right? Yeah, I guess you're saying. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm gonna assume that those people can leave, but still, I I wouldn't. I don't think. You know, maybe you know. I don't know. Okay. Well, <clears throat> okay. You got a factor in that you can leave. So, uh, you're gonna spend a lot of money. So it's gonna be real lavish. It's going to be real nice on the inside. It's going to be fucking un in unbelievable, right? Because it's in Dubai, so it's going to be fucking pimping all the way. Right? This is, I can't remember. Thing. Oh, it's Saudi Arabia. The It's called The Line. So okay. it's not it's not Qatar. It's, it's Saudi Arabia. Okay. They got money, too. They got all the money. They got so a you couple. know it's going to be nice. Yeah. I've and heard. You can leave whenever you want. Like, okay. Like, why not? If I got the money for it. I heard bitch. that the uh that the Saudi team mm -hmm. like like for one of their games that they won, like each player on the on the team was was given like a Rolls Royce or some shit. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. They should. They should get that. Those millionaires should get all that extra money for uh whatever reason. <laughs> like that that pisses me off so much. Like uh <clears throat> I'm not rich. I'm not famous. Nobody knows what? us. What? Nobody knows us. Nobody cares. They don't care. Look, they don't care. But if I was rich and famous and I was getting like gifts for being rich and famous, that's fucking weird, isn't it? Like, why do we do yeah. that? Why do we, why do humans <clears throat> do that shit? That makes no sense to me. Like, okay, yeah, you won some kind of sports event and you win the trophy. You know, cool, dope. I love football. You know, go Niners. You know, Vince Lombardi's every year, hopefully. It doesn't work out, but um, it still sucks to me that they lose, but it's fine to them because they got tons of money and they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand how, I, you know, maybe it's just advertisement for companies. I don't know, but I hate when I see people with with so much be given so much more for showing up right now I mean, on, on, on the one hand like i i so like if you're let's say you're a restaurant you know maybe you're not super big but like you know you're you're a restaurant you make really good food and like somebody really famous likes to eat there mm -hmm. right and they have and you know they they're very famous and they're well you know well off yeah you know if you're an up-and-coming restaurant and you know you comp their meal because you're like hey man fucking thanks for coming here and then, like, you make a big, like, it's a public, like, you make a post on your on your Facebook about it. Like, hey, fucking. Yeah. Who's somebody I'm famous? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds likes to come to my sh uh, my restaurant. Mm -hmm. You should come check it out. Then, yeah, that yeah, for sure, because that's going to generate more income probably. And, you know, all the people that are going to go there to, like, fanboy or girl over fucking Ryan on the hopes that they could see him that one time he's there or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. So on the one hand, I get it from that perspective, but like, <clears throat> if you are a, again, another restaurant and you are definitely five star, well established, everybody in the fucking planet knows who the fuck you are and you're still comping these people, but like I go in there and I got to pay $200 per plate. Like, come on, man. But I'm then, not asking for free food, but like at the same time, like, yeah, like I get what you're saying. Yeah. The, yeah. But on the flip side, they're like, they're, that's their shit. Who am yeah. I to be like, give me free shit. Fuck them. <laughs> Well, it's not. It's not that. It's not that we're asking for free shit. 
But like, asking for charge it. those motherfuckers too. <laughs> you know how fucking expensive Bentleys are, Rolls Royces. Is? You know how much those things are. More than my Jeep. Fuck. Oh my god. We can buy twenty seven Jeeps for your fucking for one Rolls Royce with the uh, floating wheels on it and shit. Mm. And for what? I mean, I love it, man. You know me. If I had the money, I'd have seven Rolls Royces. All of them, yeah. black. every single one of the same fucking car, black. You know why? Because that's my money. I guess you know people who own Rolls Royces can do what they choose to and give them to who they like. I personally, they ain't got no money for that, but I take it. You fucking right, I take it. Yeah, no, I I appreciate your struggle with uh, pluralizing Rolls Royce. Um, Rolls Royce, I'm fucking around, but yeah, are you? Um, I know it's not Rolls Royce. This is come on, man. This shit, Jesus. It reminds me of that Key and Peele skit, the uh, one where they're standing outside the, what was it like their valet guys? Have you seen that? Bruce Willis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I was thinking about fucking um, Keenan and Kel for some reason. I'm like, why are you? Oh that? my god. Thinking... Welcome to the Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, man. Take your order. I'm sure you did. You watch that? Yeah. I know this girl that fucking loved the fucking uh, the other one, the one that's not, you know, popping like the uh, like Kale, Kale, Kale. Is his name? Yeah, Keenan yeah. and Kale. Yeah, yeah, the other one. She knew him like for whatever reason. I'm like, oh man, that's cool, and you know, there it is. But well, because Keenan, that's the dude on SNL now. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Killing it. The other guy is killing it too and making it sound like he's not doing shit. He's he's on a bunch of Nickelodeon shows still. Really? Yeah, man. He's making a ton of money. He's he's making more money than me, man. No. Yeah. But uh he's uh yeah, he's on a bunch of shows. He's out there making doing his thing. Acting. Right. Actors. You ought to uh, acquire him as a as a as a as a talent. Well, you know how that's been fun, but it's slowed down quite a bit. I'm just assuming it's just because of the uh the time of the year. Yeah. Seasonal, maybe, or holidays. A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the same thing, isn't it? I feel like, I mean, maybe, but I feel like, um, when you think about like uh, people who do acting, right? So let's say you know actors in general, so, actors specifically. Um, the number of successful actors compared to the overall population is it's a pretty pretty big gap, right? No, so re- really low percentage. Yes. Um, so well, I feel well, like well, 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 let me stop you. It's not that there's an enormous difference in the workforce, there's just an enormous difference in people that you know from that force. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like there's thousands, there are millions of actors out there, but you know, you know, uh, Gail Gadot. I don't know why that name popped in my head, but you know who she is, or you know, who, right, uh, who those people are. So they're actors, they just don't have that name yet. Right. Well, that's kind of what I mean, though, right? So, um, to take the holidays off when you're really working for this one thing that a thousand other people are working for, the chances that one of them is working harder than you at achieving that goal is pretty high. Very high. So I just kind of feel like, you know, like those that are like putting in the work over the holiday seasons and like, you know what, man, like I'm de- I'm dedicating my life to this craft and this is what I want to do. So morning, noon and night, this is what I'm doing. Um, so it's interesting to me that it would kind of slow down during the holidays because it kind of shows you like when it comes to like you acquiring more talent, whatever, like those that are involved or engaged over the holiday seasons, I feel like those are the ones that want it a little bit more that or they just don't have any fucking family. Well, it's the, just the different opportunities. Like uh, you're saying, and I get that, like people who want it, you're going to go out there and get it. Mm-hmm. There's just so many different opportunities that are actually open. Like, uh, yeah. you know, there's going to be a, a a bunch of new movies and TV shows that are going to come out soon because, all right, let me rephrase that. There are a bunch of shows that are going to start accepting new work because, you know, a bunch of shows are going to start to come out. So, your pilots for new programs, they're coming. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of work 
but there are so many people trying to get those jobs for everyone right. that is available. There are literally 15,000 people behind that one spot. So right. you, if you are really trying to do it, you better be out there fucking busting your ass to do it. Like having a talent agent that will only get you so far. Like you still have right. to go to these auditions and you still have to fucking, you got to show up. And if you don't like, there's somebody who's going to bust your ass on that job and do so much better. And that's it. So a lot of people, a lot of times work with folks, they don't understand like, Hey, it's just because you sign with somebody doesn't mean it's, it's fucking cruise time. Now it's fucking time to put your foot down pedal to the metal. Right. Other thing that's the flip side of that is if they want you, they're going to push. So if you're somebody that they find, uh, is worth it, you know, big Hollywood, they're going to put that money into you. And that's a lot of money. Yeah. More money than you can fucking imagine can go into you for whatever project. And they don't need you fucking this up. Right. They're going to pick the right person for this shit. It's not going to be you, the new guy who just showed up. It's going to be the seasoned veteran who never misses, you know, time to time to start and all that kind of dumb shit. So it's, it's a, it's kind of a weird business to get into. Like if you don't show out from the start and if you're not big from the start, it's a hard business to continue to do, but people yeah. still try, man hats off to them and i'm here to help um well i think it's uh so so it's these uh i'm gonna i'm gonna say this facetiously um it's those these warriors out there grinding every day putting in the work these alpha types fucking waking up at the fucking ass crack of 3 30 a.m. and then sleeping and or not sleeping at all and then working all day and then going to bed at three in the morning giving their whole life to it because they're the the warriors of their craft i think i'm sorry i'm just really annoyed <clears throat> with that whole concept um the but reason it, i bring that up is that's how it, that's how it functions that's yeah i know i know no <clears throat> i uh so when I mentioned earlier that I was ranting today, I was I was ranting about that stuff again. I made a, a solo show on it a while back about alphas and all that stuff, and I saw a video um, come up on my Instagram reels, and uh, it was uh, it, the audio was from the movie Three Hundred, where King Leonidas is trying to hype up his dudes. Mm. And the video was actually pretty cool because it was all these statues. Um, uh, of the time or from the time whatever so it was really really neat i was like that's cool i'm gonna look at some of the other videos on the account and see if they're like that as well and they are not some of them were kind of close but like it's all this audio about how you know you're at this warrior this this badass out there like battle tested fucking blood sweat and tears and all this other shit, and then it's just just videos of a guy in a gym. <laughs> and I hate that. I hate that so much. The American culture, or one of the um, aspects of the American culture is that everybody is a warrior, and everybody is this badass, and everybody is this, all these fucking things, and no, you're not. Like, you're not at all. I, I go to the gym, like I like to, I like to do fitness and because I like to go to the gym, that doesn't make me a badass. It doesn't make me a warrior. It doesn't make me an alpha male. It doesn't make me any of that shit. It just makes me a guy that likes to go to the fucking gym. Right. And I understand like there's a other audio just <clears throat> like, you know, never underestimate a man, a person that goes to the gym and keeps his hood on and doesn't look at people because that man is fighting demons or some shut the fuck up. I just fucking just, it's so fucking, it's the lamest. That shit is cringy as fuck to me. If you are one of those people, I'm talking to you directly. That shit is cringy as fuck. 
you have to stop because you are none of those things. You're not a lion, right? And the people around you are sheep because they're not doing as many reps as you are. You're not fucking Billy Badass on the fucking block. You're not battle tested. You're just some dickhead in the gym with your hood on because you think you're fucking cool. I fucking hate that shit. And I see that shit translated to real life because I, I, go, I go to a gym. There's a lot of high schoolers that go there. And I, they do that. They fucking, they come in there and they fucking act like they're afflicted <laughs> by something. I'm like, motherfucker, you are 16. The only thing you're afflicted with is fucking acne. Maybe that's how they fucking like get in, yeah. get ready. Like, ah, oh, they fucking, ah, I'm fucking crazy. Ah, I'm hardcore. But you're not. You but know, that's the, the perception that people at the gym, you have to be like that to be ready to go to the gym because that's how you do it. That's how you achieve whatever you're trying to achieve at the gym is if you have to, God, I'm, I'm fucking get pumped up. I'm, I'm <laughs> dark hearted. Don't talk to me or whatever. Or, you know, don't dark hearted. Look, don't, yeah. You see my, my camera set up here at the gym. Mm -hmm. You see me working out. Don't get stand in front of it because I'm trying to display my struggle i don't know what their deal is but like uh that's how they get into it i don't knock it but oh, i'm knocking the fuck out of it i mean I, I, I suppose i'd knock it too but no i am because like okay <clears throat> you brought up a good point you have all of these dudes with like like semi-professional content like really great video angles yeah. it's all cut up you know what i'm saying it's got some good audio on it and then the audio was talking about how it's like you know, I'm fighting these demons, but I'm a lion fucking blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. It's the cliche, man. Cliche. You are literally creating content for yeah. likes because to generate they're... likes, to take you, to take, to take the consumer, the people that are liking your shit to your store or to your fucking buy my program to build better glutes or the, the six best exercises to burn belly fat, which is all bullshit all bullshit it's all a fucking show it, it's you're casting out a wide net okay yeah and this wide net is going to catch as many people that i can possibly catch that like what i'm saying basically mm -hmm. what our show is you know saying, yeah no it's but not. We're not we're not we're not like like that like we're not over here saying we're, that, not, like... we're not over here selling it like only to you know it's a weird no 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 you can't you can't compare the show to these dudes man no no yeah that's what i'm saying i gotta stop <clears throat> yeah we're not we're not over here like pretending to be like you said dark-hearted and afflicted and broken and that's why i'm here to shove the to shove the pain real deep or uh, the only existence is pain blah 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 shut the fuck up i hate it Listen, but, I under, I understand getting pumped up. I understand getting pumped up and going to the gym. I understand sitting in your fucking car, listening to the fucking metal and getting fucking riled up, getting your fucking heart rate up and going to the gym. I get it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. But don't go in there pretending that your life is broken and this is the only way that you can put yourself back together. I mean, I get it. For some people, the, the gym is their safe space. It's their place away from all that stuff because blah, blah, blah. But you are not. It's not everybody is what you're saying. You're not in there really, fighting demons. Is it everybody? And it's like that in there. It, it's just, nah, there's there's normal people that work out. <clears throat> doing I'll tell you what, set. dude, the the most jacked guy in my gym. I kid you not, man. He, he definitely a competitor because he's always fucking like orange or brown the way they you know they're, they're painted. Yeah, <laughs> always. The dude is all he just stays that way. The dude is probably in his sixties, and the dude is like straight up fucking jacked as fuck, dude. Like he doesn't. I I I I've seen him in there for going on two years now. I've never seen him take pre workout. I've never seen him. I don't. I've never seen him with a shaker bottle of any kind. He just walks over to the fountain, takes a drink when he wants it. The dude is cut. The dude is jacked. I mean, he'll sit there and do fucking pull ups for fucking months, mm -hmm. um, with ease. And he's not. He's not listening to music. He doesn't have any headphones, and he has his glasses on, like his reading glasses, because he's old. His glasses. And he's just in there, like, and he's just doing what he needs to do. He's not in there acting like fucking Billy Badass, fucking battle-tested dickhead, fucking I'm a lion. He's just some guy working out. Um, it, it, he just no. doesn't need to get to that point. He's he's just a chill-ass dude. <laughs> he knows he's, he's experienced. These younger people, they need that. 
they think they need it afflicted t-shirt like the <laughs> army people with the afflicted t-shirts back in the day they felt like they needed that shit that's what what i'm saying the, the people at the gym are now yeah i mean you know i bet you don't need that you really don't you just need to have a goal in mind and a plan to work towards that goal that's it it may be may you need motivation to go to the gym maybe you need to kind of budget to go to the gym that's fine mm-hmm. but, but don't post content on social media claiming to be all these other things in a world with people who are very susceptible to believing in bullshit. One of the big things is coming up right now is SARMs. You know what SARMs are? S-A-R-M-S? No, what the hell is that? Um, SARMs is like, it stands for like selective androgen receptor modulator, I believe. I can't remember what the M is, but <clears throat> basically they're being advertised as like a, a legal version um, to steroids. And they're claiming to be safe. They're claiming to be great for you know this and that. And you've got teenagers who are not even completely fully developed taking these things as if they're like, you know, candy, right? What's fucked up is uh, SARMs are made up of a pile of other different fucking chemicals. And some of them are known to be cancer causing like 100% are fucking cancer causing chemicals. Like we know for a fucking fact, if you take these things in, you will get cancer mm-hmm. or you increase your chances of getting cancer. Some of them actually have steroids in them. They're not good for you. They're not healthy. They will fucking p- potentially prematurely end your life. Um, and all for what? Because you're 17 and you see this guy on social media talking about how he's got fucking demons and he's got these big ass goddamn muscles and you want them to, but you don't want to do the fucking work. That fucking guy, the guy I was just talking about, for example, he has been in the gym, I guarantee you, for fucking 30 years. Mm -hmm. He has worked his way to where he is now. He's put in the work, the hours, the fucking dieting, the sleep, everything. He's natural. You can tell he's natural. But. The, the issue is well, people it's a big thing. nowadays and I, I, found like, I feel like an, an asshole saying this but social media you need to have those fucking fast ass results like I need to yeah. fucking have this done now nobody knows how to be an expert at anything anymore because you need to have those fast ass results and with these cameras and shit I can edit together some fast ass results that'll blow your mind even though the people who really work at that stuff, really work at this stuff, has been working, like you say, the person at that gym has been there probably 30, 40 years. They're fucking pros at it. They've fucking torn muscles and broken bones and done the whole nine yards in the gym. They've been hurt from the gym longer than these people have been in the gym. And those people who want those fast as results is trying all these kind of supplements, like you said, all this kind of fucking medication that literally gives you cancer like you said will literally kill you mm-hmm. hey man you gotta have those results people don't fucking value life anymore right it's a fuck it's all about the instant gratification of stuff i need to have that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah I, exactly i need i need to get that i need to get that i need to get that like i need to get that thumbs up i need to you know tiktok has shown us that you can have an account that can generate millions of likes per video and you go viral and that's what people are going for they're going for what's viral they're going for what gets them the most instant gratification today and what is what is going viral what is it what does that get you what is it what the depends depends i mean for one i mean i think probably the biggest the biggest appeal to it is clout and then Right, like, oh, you see my video, man. I got fucking five thousand likes. We got fucking, and I, and I, I was guilty of that when I first started trying to grow my Instagram account because I was trying to like turn it into a business. Mm-hmm. I was guilty of that. I was constantly checking my likes to see where they were at. Right, like, oh, man, this one got. I remember, like, I was getting like you know 10, 15 likes per video per per post, and then it was like fucking thirty. I was like thirty, holy shit! And then that's like, um, you know, I got into the hundreds, and I think my my most liked post was like eight hundred and something likes and i was like holy shit that's a lot Mm -hmm. but to what end you know what i mean i was trying to turn it into a business so i can i I could justify it that way but it it became an obsession Mm -hmm. right um it became such an obsession that like that's all i focused on like when i was making content like i would try and like stage things 
right? Like, okay, like I'm gonna pose like this and do this fucking. And you can probably go through my my posts a couple of years ago and see which ones are like that because that's what it was. Yeah. And um, you because you 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 post for likes. I mean, it's just like what we do with the show, right? Like we're making content for likes for listens, but the the end goal is the difference. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to do the show um, because we want to bring in this community of veterans. We want to bring in people together. We want to help them when it comes to like mental health stuff. We want to make something better. We're not trying to like, I don't care about being famous. You don't care about being famous. We like to be successful at what we do, but like success doesn't have to be defined by how well are we a household name or how many commas does our bank account have? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's all about the angle, right? Clout, um, that's not an end goal. That's that's short lived. Yeah, people. I mean, I mean, that's what we understand that, but uh, these young kids don't. If that's all they know. That's that's what they're raised up on. We weren't raised with social media. We were raised to go out there and do shit and see results. Yeah, like things are different now. Like uh, my son. Luckily, he isn't really into social media. He plays video games. And he talks to his friends that way, but he doesn't really deal with, you know, doing shit for likes, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, like people do shit for likes, and the the end result is just more likes. And and, and now, what do you got? Just likes. What do you got to show? Yeah. For? Like, I think I never like really post shit for likes. I always go and look to see how many people I lost following. Mm-hmm. To me, that's more important, kind of. Um, maybe I'm saying shit on the social media stuff that people don't like so much. So I have to be smart about the things that I post to try to make before I forget, go further. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to be careful. I don't really care about if I get likes. I care about if the fucking viewership lowers. Right. Which is again, it's the same fucking thing as is you know this other end, person saying end oh, result it's for likes, yeah. But I have a different end result. Yeah, I don't know what that person's end result is for those likes. You know, maybe uh, that's just that's just it. Mm-hmm. Well, fucking do all this work and all this shit and fucking all this kind of creative content just to be seen and just to be known and. You know, maybe it makes them money. I don't know, but that's that's what they like. I can't knock it, right? Right. So, you know, have fun with the time you got. You know, do do what you want to do, but I don't know. I'm not going to beat up on them. You can beat up on them, Kevin. I'm not going <laughs> to. You can fucking swing away. I just got you, but I just I just get riled up or riled up over some of the dumbest things. But hold on a second. Um we're gonna have to edit from here because I gotta I gotta piss really bad. <laughs> All right, go for it. Yeah.
<laughs> Wait, what's up? Nothing. I was just I was just laughing about how like we were talking about how uh uh video would be like uncensored, unedited. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you know, we got bathroom breaks. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I, sometimes I'll watch like really long. Are you recording again? Or still? You never stopped. You can't really. Yeah. I suppose you could stop it, but it'd just be a bunch mm-hmm. of chopped up videos. Well, no, I was, was going to say, like, you watch like some of the Joe Rogan stuff and you're like, they're talking for like three hours. When do they ever stop and go piss? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because you know, yeah. Joe Rogan's out there drinking water and shit. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, just cracks me up. But, uh, but yeah, no, I mean it, it. It's it's a whole thing. I just I just wish people would be more honest with themselves when it comes to all of that stuff. Like, so I made the comparison earlier today. Two hundred years ago, right? Like, I'm sure there were people walking around in the wild west pretending like they were the biggest, baddest fucking cowboy out there or outlaw or whatever the fuck, right? Mm-hmm. But unless they were living that life, no, they weren't. 500 years ago, right? I'm the I'm the greatest swordsman in all the lands. But then his buddy's like, dude, you're a cobbler. You make shoes. Like, that's that's what you do. That's your profession. That's your... That's what you give to the village, right? That's your... Whatever, right? Yeah. You're not the greatest swordsman in all the lands. And if you are, why are you not a knight? Because there were people in those roles. Right? Right. So, so, you know, back then there was like a, maybe, you know, I would imagine some type of like, I don't know, checks and balances by like innate, like checks and balances. Right. So like, you know, your profession defined what you were. That's where, where a lot of like last names tend to come from, like Smith, right. Is a Smith of some type, you know? mm-hmm. but like, <clears throat> that's what you were. That doesn't mean that you couldn't elevate out of that position and become a knight or something greater, a noble of some type. Just like, you know, back in the Wild West, you could have become the greatest cowboy and made a name for yourself in the history books. Yeah. But if your profession was, I'm a card dealer at a local saloon, you're probably not the greatest cowboy in the Wild West. You know what I mean? Fast forward to today, um, you know, you can be a, a, a sales associate at Walmart, but you can post content on social media talking about how you're this fucking lion in this world of sheep and only you see the truth and the reality of things and blah, blah, blah. Guy, you're nine to five. You wear fucking slacks and a tie. Yeah. Who's going to prove them wrong? Who's going to, who's going to call them out for their bullshit? I know that you were trying to do it here. But who's gonna call these people out for that? You, we see it all the time. But do you, are you ever like, hey, hey, stop? Yeah, stop. right. Do we well, ever do, do that? this? No, we're not like rude assholes. We're not just gonna roll up on people and like, hey, stop pursuing your dreams because they're stupid. Well, and it's not even like are. I wouldn't even say it's in pursuit of a dream. But let, let me ask you this: You've been in combat, right? For shizzle, like actual combat against an armed enemy. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have too. Right. Do we walk around acting like we're fucking the lions of the world and we're warriors? Do we say that? Is that a thing that we do? No. So I mean, why is it necessary for people who have never been in those situations to walk around and doing that? Are they proving something? It's 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 romantic. It's fucking fucking cool. It's fucking cool shit. It's not something that everyone can say they've done. Not everyone that on the street can say that they've done the shit that we've done. So a lot of times people want to steal that. They don't want to fucking put their own ass on the line because that's fucking dangerous. It's scary as fuck. If I could trade with some people, like uh, those are fucking memories you don't necessarily want to fucking have, but we Mm. got them. You guys can take all the fucking cool parts about it and leave us with the fucking fucked up parts. But that's just how it is. It's how that's how uh, society is. You know, take what you want and leave what you don't. Yeah, it's the um, it's the old saying. Everyone, everybody wants to be gangster until it's time to do gangster shit. Yeah, it's not even just that. It's everyone wants to be a gangster until it's time to do some gangster shit and then like reflect on it. 
because who yeah. wants to fucking reflect on that shit? Yeah, the shit that falls on afterwards. Yeah, nobody I'll, I'll, avoids it. I know I did. <clears throat> did. Yeah, no, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of people don't seem to fucking think about that part of it, right? Like, okay, I, oh, man, that's fucking cool. You went to Iraq, you did this, you did that, you fucking did. You was like to kill people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They don't think about, like, the question itself. Like, I'm, as, I'm, I'm asking this person, what is it like to kill another person? Yeah. Like, do you, Some people fucking want to know. They want to know inquiring minds want to know but they don't they don't think about like what did i just ask this person yeah what did i make him what did i make this person fucking relive yeah yeah in that little flash because you know it doesn't take a second you can relive everything in like a fucking in a blink of an eye you can relive an entire fucking fight in your head yeah so i've never personally been asked like have you killed somebody thank god like, I don't think I'd know what to do with that. Like, That's actually kind of surprising. I, uh, I, my family has never asked that. Uh, not that I know of, that I can recall. No, they never asked that. I, I mean, they, you got to think four years in the Army and then 13 years as, as, as LAPD. Like, you would think at some point somebody would have asked. I mean, That's 17 years of being a hard charger. Nobody's ever in my family's ever asked that because huh. I didn't bring it up. I didn't want to talk. I haven't talked to them about that the specifics about it. I've talked to my wife about some things because of course I'm gonna talk to my wife about it, but like my son, no. Mm-hmm. Like uh my mother, sisters, cousins, no. They never really got into that kind of shit because I think they understand and they're like mature fucking people and they know the right shit to ask folks and the wrong shit to ask folks. They don't know how somebody might react to that because we we're all raised to understand like some people might react to something differently. You got to fucking feel the room with these fucking questions you ask folks. And not say like, hey, I'm fucking crazy. Don't ask me that shit. They're like, no, they don't fucking care. This is not going to change their perception of me, hopefully. So, but other people that you don't know, I've never been asked by, you know, no, never. No. I don't don't know what I would do if, if it was somebody I don't know who had asked that. I would assume flat out, you don't know me. Cause you wouldn't ask me that mm-hmm. and how would, how, how, how would I respond to it? Uh, well, fucking, I don't know. How would you respond to it? Cause it seems like you were asked that once or twice. No. Yeah. When I, when I first came home, um, I was asked a lot actually. Um, and so on, on, on the one hand I understand, right. Because like in our generation, we are the, we we're the first combat veterans, like, you know, um, and you know, given the time frame in which we went, you know, so we were, we deployed in the beginning of the global war on terror. And so when we came home, we left active duty and uh, we're there and we're, we're, we're people who are about the same age as us. And they're seeing all this shit unfold on TV for the first time really in their lives. Right. Mm-hmm. And so then meet somebody who's of the same age group, the same peer group. And they're, you know, who, who was there in those places that they're seeing on the news so it's easy for them, I think, to think to themselves, well, I can talk to this. I can ask them this question because we're the same age. We're the same. We're here at the same diner having the same cup of coffee or whatever, like two tables apart or whatever. No big deal. Yeah. So I get why, like, somebody might feel comfortable asking that question. But when you stop and 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 think about what the question actually, what you're ask, what you're actually asking them, like, because you don't know how that person took it, mm-hmm. right? You don't know, oh did you kill someone? Okay. Yes. What was it like? Well, I mean, you're not prepared for the answer that could be like, well, it was a child. Oh, so, yeah. you know what I mean? Or yeah, that's right. I, you know, I was directed to put machine gun fire into this building and accidentally killed a mother and her two kids. Mm. So how, how the fuck do you think it was like? They're not prepared for that answer. They just assume that the people were killing our enemy combatants. And for the most part, yes, that that's what we're, that's who we're going after. But is that how it always plays out in war? No, it's not, you know, the collateral damage is a real thing. And it's, it's almost dehumanizing to refer to non-combatants as um, collateral damage, but that's what they're referred to as. It's, they're not prepared for that answer though. But like at first, you know, I didn't know really how to answer it. 
um, when I, when I was asked, I was asked often, often enough that like I was able to like process these thoughts over a, the course of several months and be like, so at first I didn't know how to answer it. And I'll just be like, I, yes, I did. And then leave it at that. Mm-hmm. The follow on question that a lot of times they had, what was it like with their big wide eyes? How'd it feel? Was it cool? It's like, you can tell me. You can yeah. Tell me what it was like. Well, they were just so amped. They'd never met somebody who'd killed another person before that they knew of. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to know what it was like. You don't know what you're asking. Cause again, you don't know who I killed. Yeah. You know? So now you're asking me to, like you said, relive those moments. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's as if, you know, you, 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 you asked this, well, let me, well, tell me about a, a, an event in your life. That's, that's tragic and traumatic. Yeah. Okay. What was that like? Oh yeah. You, you, your, 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 your sibling was in a car accident and then they died. What was that like? Tell me about it. How often, how, how was that? Was it cool? You know what I mean? It's the same concept, right? A lot of people don't think about that. Yeah. And so I got to the point where I started being like, um, why do you want to know? Why are you asking? It's one of two reasons. Either you want to know if it's cool or you want to know how I'm doing. Because I, I also get asked that question too. Some people were aware. You know, obviously like you know, asking the first question is a little off putting. Hey, did you kill anybody? But if they followed it up with, man, like that had to be that had to be hard. Like that how how are how are you doing? That was going to be my next question was, has everyone, anyone ever asked you, how are you doing after? Yeah. So thank yeah. Thank you for, for even saying that because that, what did you say? Like, well, that's, so, fucking, uh, uh, that's heavy duty. Like, Hey, I just told you about this fucking heavy duty shit. Now, uh, this is how I'm doing after. Yeah. Sit down and, and get ready for this shit. So the ones that typically asked, um, how are you doing? Were people that either knew me? Or women. Mm. The ones that wanted to know if it was cool and what it was like were people that didn't know me and dudes. Um like almost exclusively on either side, right? Why do you think that is? I mean mean, fucking guys are guys. Guys are guys, yeah, true. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I we're 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 not really known for being for having the, the 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 most foresight um, or to be the most understanding or the most emotionally connected. Right. And that's a, you know, problem with society I'd imagine. Um, But yeah. So it got, it got to the point though, where, where I would ask them like, well, why are you asking if it's, if depending on which reason it is, I'll, I'll give you the answer. If it's the first reason and you just want to know if it's fucking cool, you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. Um, and then they would get offended at that. Like they would, I would, I had people actually be like, dude, what, what, why? Like, that's fucked up. Like, think about what you just asked. Um, and now, and I will say like this is before a lot of the struggles that I would later end up having with PTSD, or whatever really started to kick in. Right. Or they, they were starting to kick in and I wasn't aware of what I was going through. And you know, and so for those that would ask for like genuinely wanting to know, I'm like, you know, I would tell them it's like, oh, okay, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it it did it it, uh, and so you try and give some, depending on who you're talking to, there's some macho answer, right? Well, I mean, you try and justify it, and and I will say like, I I I stand by, I've always said this, and I kind of stand behind it, like I I can justify it because when when a person decides to, um walk into their closet and grab their gun and say to themselves, I am going to go outside and I'm going to kill somebody on the other team. They made the conscious decision. Now the, you know, it's on you. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if you're out in the woods and you get attacked by a mountain lion and a mountain lion, you know, you happen to be on a trail and you know, maybe the, you know, for whatever reason, the mountain lion just like decides to jump out and attack. It has a reason right? It's cubs are probably nearby. Maybe it's den is nearby. Maybe it's wounded. Um, Maybe it was on the hunt for something. Maybe it hasn't eaten in a while and and you just looked, you know, easy to take down. But what a lot of people don't understand is like in the wild, uh, predators will typically target the weaker ones, right? So when you watch like, uh, 
lionesses hunt, um, say gazelles, right? They'll get them on a chase, and whichever ones fall back, or whichever ones are wounded, the herd will typically leave behind, and the lionesses get food. Right? I mean, that's how it works in nature. So when you get attacked by an animal in the wild, it's not because it's choosing to attack you because it thought about it. It's acting instinctively. Um, people don't do that. When somebody attempts to kill you or the guy next to you um, in war, it's a, it's, a, it's a decision they made. And they made the decision we make the decision. It's reactive, right? right? I mean, how many times, how many times when we deployed, did we go out there and initiate contact? Like went out there and started fighting, just shooting people randomly. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that's ever happened. No, because that's not ever happened that once. <laughs> no, I mean, we would go out with like target houses, right? We're, maybe we're looking for this or for that. And we had these objectives, but we didn't just pop in the door and throw a frag in and start fucking blasting motherfuckers. No, no. Round one. <laughs> Every every fucking firefight that we were ever in, um, and to my best approximation is well in the in the two hundred range, two hundred to you know two fifty two seventy different days of 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 firefights. Um, when you really think about that year on deployment, that's about where we were. Every single one of those was initiated by the other person, and we were strictly uh, reactionary. I mean, you decide to pull the trigger on me. I'm going to pull the trigger on you. Hey, it's I'm going to come, going to go home after this. Yeah, that's what everyone's. Uh, even uh, with the police, that's what it, the goal at the end of every night was, or every start of the shift. It was I'm going to go home. I don't. I'm not going to go out there trying to start chases, and I'm not going to go out there and start to at least you know the same folks. Right. I'm gonna go out there and try to cause issue, but I'm here if it happens. Like a lot of people won't be there when it happens because they can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Not strong enough to to deal with this sort of threat. They don't have the proper equipment to deal with this kind of threat. Like this is what we get paid to do. This is what we swore we would do. If you're in the military in any branch, so. You got to stand on top of that wall of freedom, right? That's what, right. that's what the, the, that's it really. Any go, any job that you fucking swear to any job that you raise your right hand to, you're basically saying you'll die for that job. Yeah. What it boils down to every single job that you raise your right hand for, that's it. You are literally pledging your life to that, your allegiance or whatever with the police. Yeah. You are literally saying, I will give my life to protect these civilians. With the army, military, I will literally give my life to protect this country. It's fucking heavy. Nobody's going to, a lot of people aren't fucking ready for that. Right. That's the truth. That's what it is. But they want to play I the think, part. Yeah, they want to play the part until it's time to actually do that shit. And now you're fucking fucked. Yeah. It, I wish there was a way that <clears throat> before you got into military, it, you could understand fully what you're getting fully into. What you're getting into. Not just the, okay, I might shoot somebody. It might suck. No. It's so much more than that. I might shoot somebody. It might suck. It's going to suck. Unless you're a fucking psychopath. You're fucking crazy. Then have at it, I guess. But everyone else has to fucking deal with that shit. Because we're human. And we're not wired all fucked up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can really legitimately... uh do that shit on the daily and just be good. Yeah. Just be like cool with it. That's fucking nuts if you can, because if you really think about what that is, that's not just you. <clears throat> Infantry folks are 
raised quotes air quotes to love to kill that's mm -hmm. it hey that's our fucking job they're medics that love to save lives there's fucking engineers that love to fucking build shit there's fucking 42 alphas that love to file paperwork or and lose paperwork mps that love to fucking police shit infantry folks are supposed to love to kill yeah it is you don't have to love it but that's your fucking <laughs> job that's your job. There's nothing yeah. else for you to do. There's nothing for you to move. There's nothing for you to paint. There's nothing for you to fucking carve or fucking cook. That's your job is to kill. I wish there was a way for people to really put that into folks' head before they get into it and really explain, like somebody who's been through a lot to sit down with these fucking classes, those those people in basic like say hey this is sergeant xyz he won or he was awarded xyz awards for bravery he's a fucking hero let's hear his story about how he deals with being a hero right you know you can ask any one of those uh, the recipients of the medal of honor mm-hmm and I guarantee you, not one of them's gonna be like, I fucking loved every minute of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you could, if you could talk to Roy Benavides today, uh, <clears throat> for the shit that he did, and the amount of people that he had to like take down just to to save that squad of uh, special forces guys, or Salvatore Junta, who, um, you know, saw one of his buddies being you know, dragged off in the dark by Taliban fighters um, in uh, Afghanistan, took off after him, had to kill some dudes for it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to sit there and talk about, like, oh, fucking dude, it was so fucking rad. Like, you listen to their stories when they tell it, they're not over there, like, all hyped up about it. Like, oh, bro, so, like, I fucking started blasting and fucking popped this one dude. It's not how it is, man. No. <clears throat> but, you know, I promise that if you ever do encounter somebody, listener, who doesn't know if you got this far into the show, uh, if you ever encounter somebody who talks like that, they're they're fucking full of shit. Yeah. Or they're fucking crazy and you should stay away from them. Mm -hmm. No one I can think of um, would ever think like uh, that shit was fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't be wrong. Like, I mean, I can casually speak about things now, but like, um, it 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 uh, it it's just the way that I talk about it. Yeah. Right. Um, like when we talk about like uh at the ODA house in June of '04, and the two Bradleys, we were taking taking fire from some building, multi-level building, and the Bradleys whoop, went down the line and just started like dumping 25 mic mic into the windows of each room until they until the shooting stopped. Mm -hmm. I can talk about that story. I wasn't one of the gunners, but I can talk about that story and being like, it that's kind of crazy. Like how fucking nuts is it that they were doing this? Blah blah blah. It's dumping rounds in this building, practically leveling the fucking thing. But I'm not talking about it from like, oh, and then they fucking obliterated that dude. Or like when when uh, the Abrams took out that RPG team in town. And yeah. Unloaded the main gun in town on an RPG team. And how, you know, the gun, uh, the, 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 tr the, t the, t the, Ab the track commander's response, you know, are they dead? They're splattered all over the place. It wasn't, it's not to display like, oh, I think that's fucking cool. The story is comical to me. The circumstances are shitty, but like, it. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, now those people are like, it's so fucking rad to watch that guy's head pop off when I hit him with the fucking Barrett fifty cal. Hmm. One that didn't happen, or two, you're crazy. I think they're just trying to figure out a way to deal with it. Like, wasn't it cool? Like, no, it wasn't cool. Like, I, they don't know what the answer to that question should be. Well, when we were there. Right. The, when, while we were there, I remember coming off a mission when fucking 
Love took out the fucking RPG man at the OK Corral. Mm-hmm. And it was it was congratulations all around, fucking handshakes, high fives, and all that stuff. Yeah. But that was <clears throat> that was there amongst ourselves, right? Like we're not out in the world. Like well, I think I think in that case it was like our own struggle with that fucking asshole. Because I yeah. shot at that guy, I fucking almost killed him. Love kills him with the next day, the day yeah. after, a few days later. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, that was a fucking one of the few times I was like cheering somebody because that motherfucker fucking harassed the fuck out of us. Like I fucking looked directly at him, aiming an RPG right at me. I looked at him. I time stopped. It's not even a fucking joke. Like one hundred thousand percent. Just like you would imagine somebody aiming a gun at you, he's aiming a fucking RPG at me. All I can do is scream. Bag it, get down, RPG. And before he could even get down, I was fucking dumping at this dude. I hadn't even sighted it in the fucking gun. I was just fucking firing because if I didn't, I was going to fucking die, is what I thought. Yeah. About. In yeah. that two second fucking interval of all this shit happened to me, turning to the left and then seeing this guy, and then all that shit happens. And then you should just start shooting because, you know, it's survival. It's fucking crazy. It's not like, oh, that shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was, that shit was fucking crazy. Insane. Yeah. Like, cool. And then Love got that fucking guy. And I looked at the fucking guy I splattered everywhere. And I'm like, all right. I didn't start this shit, but he fucking finished it. Yeah. Well, and if, from what I recall, um, that guy, that was cat and mouse for like, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Yeah. Heat. And uh and so what I think is interesting is what I remember Love telling us about how he you know, it was one of three alleyways that we knew that he was gonna come out of because he always came out of one of three. And they did they positioned themselves in a place to where he had to only come out of one. And then um probably after speaking with you about, you know, um how that played out and, and when that happened and then so love like sighting in the gun and leaving it aimed right at that fucking one alleyway. And mm-hmm. wouldn't you fucking know it, dude pops out. Nah. So yeah, no, I mean, it, it's definitely um, an excitable moment, right? Like it's like fucking finally we took out this dude. Yeah. But it's not like we want to, it's not like it's a parade. It's a, yeah. it's not like it's like cheers to everybody. And all these years later, it's not something that like, we're like, seeking clout for seeking um acknowledgement for it's it was the job there but in, in in here that's that's it's just a it's a it's a memory that happened it's a thing that happened it's an mm-hmm. event that a lot of people just can't deal with yeah that's what i was going to say is that was uh it was we can talk about it because it was something that happened mm. you know we can all one way or another, tell a story about something that happened. Your angle of this, my angle of that, why I did what I did, and why you did what you did, and why we asked those questions about who did what and all that kind of stuff. It's something that we can all kind of stitch together through our memory. Mm-hmm. Like we gotta, we have to talk about this shit and put it on tape because, you know, our memories, at least mine's, is shitty. So, you know, it's important that we talk about this kind of stuff, but that's that's kind of one of the only things that we're going to have between each other is these fucking stories. That's it. We're all going to live different lives. Everyone's going to go in different directions. No one's going to be the same. No one. From the time you raised your right hand and swore that you would give your life for this country until now, this second, everybody had a different life. Yeah. Including that day on that corner where that dude got blown away or the day Kreider got killed or Yeah. Yeah, man. And see that's the shit that we're talking about. <clears throat> Everybody wants to be a gangster until it's time to fucking deal with the consequences of having been somewhat gangster. You know what I mean? 
That's the shit that nobody thinks about. That's the bullshit, man. That's what, that, that's why I make all these fucking rants when I see these fucking people out here doing this shit. Like, you don't even know, man. You don't. So. Nope. Until you that, ask. <clears throat> and then when you ask, you get all this shit. Yeah. Like, are you ready for the fucking answer? That should be the name of this fucking, this particular show is, are you ready for the answer? Is you're gonna ask some questions, but are you ready for the answers to those fucking questions? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind people asking now, but that's kind of what it is. I mean, are you ready for these answers? Because yeah, you, you got to know what yeah. you're asking. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. I wouldn't want to let you think it was one way when it was actually this way. Yeah, well, and so that's one thing. You know, having been a drill, um, and training soldiers in basic training, like. I felt the absolute need to be 100% honest with them whenever they had these questions mm-hmm. because who else are they going to get the honesty from? Who else are they going to get the truth from? And, you know, I, I, I was, I was honest with them and they don't have, they don't have a choice at that point. Like, even if they're not asking the question, like I'm going to let them know, oh, yeah. why did you, why did you join the army? Because I want to kill people. Well, let's talk about that. You know what I mean? And I would lay it on. I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. You want to kill people and defend the country. First of all, you draw, you joined the wrong job, but we'll, we'll, you know, some, you know, the global war on terror doesn't necessarily care about that. So now you want to kill people. What's that like? How do you do it? Do you go about, how do you go about doing it? Do you think you can do it? That's the big question. Do you think you can do it? Yeah. And then, <clears throat> okay, so maybe you can, maybe you can in the heat of the moment, thanks to your training, you can pull the trigger. You can actually aim down your sights effectively and pull that trigger, slow and smooth, pop. Now what? Yeah. Now what do you do? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with those consequences? Tomorrow and today, at the end of the day, you know, when you go, when you're off mission, you're back at the, you're back at the FOB or your patrol base. Tomorrow, the day after you've killed somebody, 24 hours after you've had time to think about it, sleep on it. A month from now, you know, you're still in theater. Okay, cool. I get it. You're still in the you're, you're still in motions of things. You're still in the heat of things, mm-hmm. and you're, you're in that mindset, right? I used to always say, like, when I was deployed, you have to allow yourself to be a little crazy so that you don't go all the way crazy. You have to allow yourself to like do these things so that you don't like go all in and be and come back fucked up. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So fine. Okay. You're on deployment. You, you know, you're still in that mindset. Got it. Okay, six months from now, you're home. No, no, you're you're back at your duty station. You're there with your buddies, right? Your military friends, and you're having a few beers. Like, oh man, you remember that time? Blah blah blah. And you're re- you're rehashing those things. You're reliving those moments. Maybe in private, you're reliving them in a different way. Oh yeah. Six months from then, you're out, out of the army, out of the military. You're home, home, home. You're the only person in your family who has ever joined. Maybe you had an uncle or a granddad or a great grandfather or whatever that served in a war, uh, but that's you know generational differences. You, know, you don't talk to them anymore. Maybe maybe you do talk to them and they explain to you what's going to happen, and you're like, that's not going to happen to me. I fucking enjoyed that shit. Then you get some time to think about it. You can't sleep. You stay awake for days, days on end, and when you do sleep, if you do sleep, it's for hours. 18 hours, 20 hours, you're awake for fucking three and a half, four days straight for no reason. You're socially awkward, if you're social at all. You're angry. You're yelling at people for no reason, for dumb things. The police are being called on you because you're belligerent. You're not even drunk, you're just belligerent. You're just incon- inconsolable for no reason. But you don't you don't know why. And you start to do with all these other struggles that arise. Um that's the shit that nobody wants to talk about. That's the shit that nobody wants to deal with. That's the shit that people want to go out there and fucking act hard and be hard and fucking act gangster and shit. Like that's the shit that they're not thinking about. Sure, man, anybody can fucking cosplay the fuck out of uh, uh some operator and look cool as fuck. Man. Even those dudes got to deal with the struggles of that shit, man. That's the part that, like, 
I wish people understood. You know what I mean? Like what it is that like we have to deal with afterwards. You know? Yeah. I mean, here we are, what, 17 years away from when we were deployed. And still, there are there, there's the struggles. Still, there's the <clears throat> the dealing with the bullshit. Yeah. You know what? It's not even uh, that there's still struggles. It's like uh, how many people aren't talking about it? Like, uh, we're, we're all talking about it. Yeah, I say we're all air quotes. It's not everybody who was there. It's we're mis- still missing a lot of folks. Yeah. There's people who refuse to talk to us. If you're still even listening to the show at this point, like the amount of people who have turned us down to talk about this stuff on the show, I can go a couple hands over counting on my fingers because it's not for everybody. It's not that easy. It's it's fucking motherfuckers do not want to fucking deal with that shit again. And basically what I'm asking people to do when they come on the show and what Kevin's asking people to do when they come on here is relive trauma. It's fucked yeah. up. Like, yeah, because we're basically. Yeah, please tell me about what happened. Uh, I don't remember it. Like, you tell me what happened. You fill me in all the blanks. Are you, you know, we're going to talk to some folks this season where they're it's going to be a different deployment and I'm, we're going to ask them like, Hey, you know, tell me how it went, what happened? What do you want to tell me about it? And the whole point behind this kind of thing is to talk about the hard shit. And, you know, we're going to be asking folks to do that. And a lot of people don't want to do that. And I get it. I'm not going to be pissed off at them. I never be mad at somebody for saying, Hey, I don't want to fucking do that shit. I, I had, people who fucking say I don't even want to fucking listen to that shit not yeah. they don't give a fuck about me uh, you know the shit that we're doing they love what we're doing but they don't want to fucking relive it so should I be pissed off at them for it no everyone has their own traumas so for everyone else coming on the show like I'm not saying like I want you to fucking spill your guts uh it's very much you tell me what you want to talk about and we will talk about that only. I'm never going to go into the whole tell me how you really felt about that and tell me about the nightmares you had. I don't. Yeah. You don't have to tell me that if you don't want to. That's fucking heavy duty shit. I mean, we're here to talk. I'm recording it. A bunch of people might listen, but a bunch of people who are listening has possibly been through the same thing and you're helping them. So if you're not ready to talk yet, that's cool. But uh, just know that we're going to keep doing this and hopefully it'll help somebody, somebody else uh, out of our dozens of. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think one of my, my, one of my favorite tens of tens of seven. Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite, um, comments or reviews on on the show was from the first season actually where um the group of marines that were listening in um who said that uh, they didn't even know that it was okay to talk about some of this stuff until they started listening to our show like fuck man like we can have these conversations the answer is yes you should absolutely have these conversations um Mm -hmm. obviously with people you trust um people that you know that are not going to sit there and judge you and be negative about it and make you feel bad for the shit that you did. And you obviously don't have to talk about everything, but at the very least get with your former comrades and talk to them. Yeah. Cause I promise you they're going through it too. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. and that's, that's been a big, big uh, message. At least I think in my mind is that like, no matter how alone you feel in the struggle, you are not. Yeah. That was the one thing I think that fucked me up in my head the most when I was deployed. The one thing was I was worried about what other people or if other people were worried about me. Mm. Like I would sit at night randomly and think no one else on this planet is thinking about me right now. That wasn't necessarily the case. And that was kind of a silly way to think like, uh, 
I guess I was just being selfish. I was being a fucking, what, 20-year-old kid uh, in the middle of something really fucked up, really crazy. Not like crazy cool, like crazy like that guy got blown to pieces crazy. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's a different kind of a thing, you know. Well, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily selfish to think that, though. Like, here you are 9,000 miles away from, you know, family all these, and home. And everybody likes to be missed when you, whenever you're gone. Yeah. Right? You know, uh, it, it doesn't matter if I'm gone for 10 minutes or if I'm gone for six months. Every time I come home, my dogs are at the door, fucking tails wagging, tongues out of their fucking mouth, ready to play. Right? Yeah. And... If I'm trying to carry groceries, then it's kind of annoying. But like, it's just you know, it's still it's still good to fucking see him. Everybody wants to be missed. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking the same thing when I was up over there. Like, here I am, like in this country. Yeah, I'm with. I, I was with you guys, right? But like, yeah. am I all alone? Do the same fucking thing. And I was to me, I was being selfish. I was flat out. Like, I can say that as a you know older person now. I'm fucking almost forty. Like, I, I, it, like you're saying, it wasn't just me there. It was you were there and all these other people. I think if we had just stopped and thought about each other instead of fucking worrying about, like, if, you know, worried about me so much. Because you guys were there. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, we weren't just thinking about ourselves in those situations, though. Like, we were definitely thinking about each other like and making sure that everybody comes home, but, like, not in that regard. Because I don't think a lot of us really kind of stopped and had that, like, that extra deep thought about like our 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 loneliness or our does anybody miss me or does anybody even think about me while I'm here? I mean, I think and I think it's easy for for soldiers in combat to get those thoughts right to like have that that like is anybody is anybody thinking of me going through this? Yeah, and we you know and like you said like yeah they were our families and shit like that know that we're there even if they don't know fully what we're doing. They definitely know that we're going through all that shit, <clears throat> but yeah, you know. you know what's even worse though, like uh, folks with families, mm -hmm. like somebody was definitely thinking about them. Like, uh, I mean, like families with like wives and kids and shit. I'm like, I'm not talking about like me and you with our moms and dads and shit back at back at home. I'm talking about like nuclear family. Like they were thinking about them and they were worried as fuck. Like mm -hmm. uh, that's a different kind of an issue. That's a different trauma completely. We went through, you know what we went through and those family members went through what they went through, worried about what the fuck we were going through. That if you really stop and think about that, like that is all the way jacked up. That's a fucked up thing to worry about somebody every fucking night and not have any clue if they made it the next morning like potentially you know when you're going to learn that your loved one has died hmm. it's not like oh you're going to get this fucking somebody's going to pop up at your door within 30 minutes like pizza hut mm -hmm. and you're going to learn maybe a couple days later in some cases and those few nights where you prayed that everything was going to be all right it was not and you had no clue now you got to deal with that. That's trauma. That you didn't think about as a soldier that this family uh, goes through. Mm -hmm. Crazy. You know, it made me think of something. <clears throat> it was so easy for people to ask, hey, did you kill anybody? What was that like? Yeah. Would, would you go up to a grieving mother and ask those same questions about her son or daughter who died in combat? Well, no. You know what I'm saying? Would those same people do that? Yeah. Oh, you, you had a you had a common sense. You had a child die in the war. How, what was that like? Yeah, it's the same goddamn thing, man. People don't understand like asking these questions. It's a it's a wild thought, and I, I haven't been asked in years, um, because I think by this point, um, it's it's been made pretty clear that like these are fucked up questions. But we also do live in a society where you know, you know a lot of communication happens anonymously online, and you can you can you know you can be playing Call of Duty, and a motherfucker will sit there and call you a pussy all all, all day long, yeah, knowing nothing about you. You know what I'm saying? You can be driving on the road, and some dude can fucking pull up on you, fucking ride your ass like like a dickhead, 
blaring his horn, flashing his fucking lights, and you know, being not knowing who's in that car ahead of them, because that's the world we live in. Yeah. No. And here we are at eight billion people. <clears throat> mm. Yep. So hey, man, we're going almost at the two-hour mark. Are you fucking kidding me? I knew I it was going for a while, man. I think it's a great time to end this show, right? I could yeah. be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think uh, it's a good time to end this one. Are we ending on a heavy note? Yeah, that's a fucking heavy note. But yeah. it's a, it's a note that you got to end on. It is what it is, right? Yeah. So I, mean, I guess so. If you've made it this far on the show, because I feel like we haven't done a long, we haven't done anything over an hour and a half in a minute. No, no, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for listening to Before I Forget. And watching. Uh, and watching now. Please like, listen, share, and subscribe to our show if you're new. Uh, this is our third season. It's going to be a ton of fun. What other noises are for that? Uh, please stick around. It's going to get even better. Thank you for uh, my, my co-host here. The person who I do all this shit with, I couldn't do it without Kevin. Thank you very much for showing up and doing your damn thing. And uh, you got anything, Kevin? No, I mean, the same thing, man. Like like I said before, dude, and like I said in that comment, like this show wouldn't wouldn't work with just me or just you or me and somebody else or you and somebody else. Like it, it works because it's us. And it that's that's just how it is, and that's how I that's how I I like it to be, and I don't I don't want any other changes to that. So people who have those thoughts, keep them to yourself. Yeah, and that's all I got. Yeah. Bye. Yay. Long fucking show.